Hi, and welcome to Tech Tuesday on Wednesday. Um, this is May, and it's Mental Health Awareness Month, and uh, I'll talk more later about that, but, um, you know, personal stuff going on, uh, dealing with bully, and, uh, you know, it delays us sometimes, but, you know, it's always good to get out there and talk with the friends and, and, and to know that about those that care about you and, and work through those. So let's get on to helping and caring about friends. I have a friend who likes teaching their hockey lessons, but they've found that uh, even though I've added, and I'll, this is one I'll do on a next, later one, I added toe picks to the front you can see up here so that you could access and demonstrate your, your flips and lutzes as a figure skating coach in your hockey skates. And some coaches find it, you know, that they need the look of it, you know, that the skaters react better if they feel like you're in the same equipment. Um, but this coach really wants to have a full figure blade, and part of that is, you know, safety. I mean, look at the heel of this. You know, it extends more, it protects you from falling backwards, especially if you get accidentally bumped or roughed up. Like that's one of the benefits of figure skating is that safety and protection at the extension of the heel. So today we're going to replace this blade uh, with a figure skate blade. All right, so here we go. So this one I already did. So I'll set this one over here. Um, oftentimes, this one I'm very lucky. This one actually has uh, Phillips screw holes on the bottom. And sometimes you'll have to use devices like this, a rivet press to, to take out rivets to get this all off. But the first step always is to remove the hockey chest. Oops, I need a different head here. This one's actually not a Phillips head, it's the um, a star head. And if you're becoming a tech, one of the tool like this is always awesome because it's got literally every head in there um, all together and you can easily find the head you're looking for. So this is more of an entry level set of hockey equipment. And just like figure skates, hockey equipment goes from a base model on up. Oftentimes the same kind of things, increased padding, increased support, you know, a variety of tongue options. They're even doing, I've been noticing that hockey's been doing foot scanning. They've been doing, um, they're doing customizations where you can order, you can order hockey skates now from the factory with changes in tongue just like you're getting from a lot of the figure skate manufacturers now. So I got all my screws out. And just like a, you know, just like a figure skate, they have that chassis and you can see these are the stanchions of it. They're made out of plastic. Most hockey blades are made of stainless steel, which a lot of the figure skate blades are starting to be made out of, um, nice and light. All right, so here's their boot. Now, one thing about the way they last a boot, remember we talked in, in earlier boots about, uh, ones about last. Well, there's that walking pitch. You see how this is kind of flat and pitched up that way, and this is here? So they build their chassis in hockey skates to meet it. So you can see as I put flush the front of the figure blade, there's this gap here. Now I find one of the easiest things to use is a hockey puck. They're always laying around a rink, and they're actually pretty um, customizable which I'm going to show here in a minute so you can see that this one doesn't quite fit right underneath so I'm gonna to have to trim this a little bit we'll do that in a second but uh, you can see that alignment you are gonna do a lot of the same things to adjust a blade see how right there there we go so that alignment pretty much the same they actually do a lot of good things with their um, with consistency wise how they with their plastic molding, they actually mark them off so you can kind of see where it should be kind of fitting. So you got that. All right, so first things first. Got to decide how much of the hockey puck I'm gonna need. And I'm gonna draw a line. I've got it at the bottom, flush with the bottom. Here for my, use my marker. I'm gonna go, oops, slipped a little bit there. So now first things first, I don't need to cut through everything. So I'm just, I got my baseline right there. See that? So I'm gonna cut through there. I find a good um, wood saw, works the best. Nice, easy, big teeth. So first thing I'm gonna do is cut the, the hockey puck down so I, cause I don't need the whole thing to sit on the back there. But I do want the left and the right. The 
big teeth help me cut through the hockey puck because just like wood, you know, it's going to grab on. It's got that rubber and it's going to grab onto the teeth. So the bigger teeth on the saw help me cut through it easily. talk about this later but I have one of these little planers these actually are also good for you can see it's kind of rough at the beginning a little not flush so a couple slides in my planer here might have a different name for some people but um, that's what I call it I remember my dad calling it so you can see now it takes out a lot of that makes it much smoother on the back of these, it has these little, little tines, so it just grabs a little bit. All right, so now, take a look at that. So now I've got a space that I can put the blade on, but I don't need all the left and right, because as you can see, if I put the whole thing on there, they're gonna be hanging off the side. So I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, look at the hockey skate look at where I'm gonna put my my blade just it doesn't have to be perfect just slip it on there you're kind of looking and you can see see how it it lifts up there at the let me see if I can find the space see how it's lifting up over here right here where there's that gap and uh, we've got to trim the height to it but I just basically want to see I don't want all of that uh, extra hanging off the boot because you know if you're doing crossover same thing so I'm just basically rough eyeballing it at this point, and I'm gonna trim it left and right now. I'm looking down from on top, what portion I'm gonna cut off. It doesn't have to be perfect. That plane later, once we get it as, um, and that final set on there, we can definitely trim it up. So you can see I'm gonna take off a little on the left and a little on the right. So just take a minute, less than that. it while I got it on here since I got it set just to get it roughed up so it's a little because it's a little easier to work with when I got an extra pair of hands this is my old grandfather's vice when I moved my uh, grandmother back up to be closer to my folks I found this beautiful one in there it's nice you get it if you got it, it's like a it's about 25 pound vice but man is it solid it's got a really nice slide and groove to it if you ever attack a good a pair of vices is always going to be fun. Um, sometimes you might have to do work on an eyelid or something. You can sometimes slip blades in there uh, using a little rubber. Move that just a little bit. There we go. So I got a pretty square piece to make a heel extension. You can see it kind of looks just like it. Huh? So again, just going to rough eyeball it. Um, I'm gonna make sure it's underneath the toe at the ball like we've talked about in other videos. See, I'm using my finger. So see how the toe picks, especially that one, is riding right underneath the toe, looking at where it's sitting. Now, here's what I've been doing to, to do these, is I take out the puck, because I know it's gonna fit under it, and I put it next to it. And now it's a delicate balance, because I gotta kinda estimate. And I can actually, let's see if any of these, you can see, well that one was you can see that one was too short. You got the gap in there. This is part of last time where I was making the last pair and having to go in and out on it. But um, you can go next to the hockey puck. See that? And then you can get a pretty good gauge of where you need to put it. So I'm holding the front up top flush, and making sure it's flat, not tipped. And I've got the hockey puck right on the center. And now I've got my, my, my Sharpie, and I'm going to basically mark the side of it. I'm going to go and I'm going to do the other side as well. I'm going to mark that line where I need that angle to be. It's a little light. Let me deepen it in here.
basically, you can see it right there, it's at a slight angle. The lighting's not always used, there you go. So you can see it's a slight angle. So I'm gonna go cut, and um, just because we can plane it more, I'm gonna err on the side of higher, that I can plane it down once I've kind of set it on the blade. This one I'm gonna hold sideways this way to go at. And again, I wanna err on the side of taller than shorter. in the front of my saw just trying to keep it from going side to side it's a natural tendency you know to twist as you're you know doing something that was what one of my friends said um, the other day you know, as I was dealing with my uh, my bully in my life I uh, I said, you know, you should go out and you know take a walk, maybe help someone, do something that takes your mind off it. And then, honestly, I got so into that thing, I forgot to help this friend. So I'm just very glad that I have these distractions to get me back doing what I love. I'm going to loosen up the grip a little bit on the vise because I'm in a hockey puck. The top gets pinched in if you keep it really snug. So sometimes if you're ever sawing something and it's like getting harder as you're getting deeper, Usually, if you've got good teeth on the side of the vise, it, it'll hold on to the material if you loosen it up just a little bit. Oops, not that much. All right, so I'm going to do a little spin of it right now. Almost there. Last little bit. I'm gonna slip it over the other side. Work on it this way. So rotating it works as well. There we go. You can see I got a little bit of that rough spot in there. Let's do a little check. Let's see how it is. Oh. You can see, got a very good, almost flush. I'm gonna do it down a little bit. And then back here, actually, I gotta spin this one. That's why it wasn't. Gotta do it there. See that? There we go. So, let me get it on the planer. Level it out a little bit. Actually ended up cutting my hockey puck backwards. So I ended up putting a hockey puck I was gonna put at the bottom to match that at the bottom, but it's still gonna match up really well because now it fits better. I mean, uh, usually I would start over and cut a puck, but you know, it's too late to stop the video. I like to do it all in one. So there we go, it, it meets uh, front to back. So I think we're all set to start on the next part, which is mounting, which we've done on other videos. So again, first things first, I'm going to line up about where I think my toe of the blade is going to go. I'm going to put my hockey puck underneath it, and then I'm going to pause for a second so that I can mark where my hockey puck goes. So what I want to do is secure it in there. Oops, my Sharpie didn't take. I'm going to do it again. Measure twice. Cut once. Okay, got my hockey puck underneath there. Mark it off. Uh, that pen's just not working. Aha, there we go. Ever in doubt, get a bigger Sharpie, right? <laughs> All right, so 
Now I'm going to secure the hockey puck to the skate. And I'm going to use a temporary wood screw just to hold it in place so it, it stays down nice and snug. Head. I got it secured. So what I'm going to do now that I got the hockey puck where I'm going to put my blade on, I'm going to go on the inside and I'm going to secure it actually from the inside. So I'm going to get a longer screw bit. It'll be easier to grab it with a a longer screw, a longer drill bit, excuse me. So you can see that that temporary screw, let's see if I can get in there, there's a temporary screw and you can see it's right in the middle and poking the heel. So that's just saying they're temporarily because I just want to get a few screws in there to make sure that this is going to stay. I'm going to seek for the side and middle of the hockey puck. Putting in some nice flathead screws. When I mean flathead, I mean I want them to be as flat as possible. So when the coaches got their skates on, they're not feeling any bubble heads. Um, I think we've talked about them before, but uh, remember there's two different kinds. There's the, the pan head, see that? Looks like a little mushroom top. And then you have your cones. And that one was a flathead. I'm going to do that right under the heel because that gives them the best opportunity to uh, not feel any of the screws. Good, so that one's set. I'm going to do two more. There it is. Sometimes your screw heads fall out. You're like, all right, what am I doing? So again, these ones are Phillips ones. I had to switch from that star over earlier. So much innovations. These are the new Jackson screws, and that's actually pretty cool. They're stainless steel, but they're also magnetic, which has made getting into these tight spaces and able to hold them on there a little easier. So now I just have two. You'll notice, and I haven't talked about it yet, but um, there's a gap. There's a gap right up in here. That's what later, after the video, I'll put in the five minute epoxy and I'm gonna fill all that void um, once I get it all set and that'll be my final part. So, with that, I'll show you. Sometimes I see gaps between them. I'm gonna do it one more time. Try to suck up some of the gapping. Like as you push into a new material, it'll push it up, so you can see. I uh, actually saw a little bit of gap I didn't like. Even, even the epoxy won't fix that, so put it back down. So now I'm ready to take out my set screw. I could leave it in there if I had a shorter one. Um, but I don't, don't really feel it's needed. It's just gonna be in the way. I took that back out. So now I can set my blade on there. Give it that last check now that I'm on there. I see a little bit of gapping there, but not bad. So I'm going to go back over here to the planer. I'm going to take a little bit of that off.
those. I need to make a little more. It's always good to check and check and check. Make sure you're getting off what you need. See that? No gapping, now a flush mount. It's always good to double check. You hate to get it done and then go, oh my gosh, there's gapping. You know, see all that? That would be bad. So if you see a lot of that in your skates, you should definitely ask, why is that? Right. Pre-drill for holes once I mark them. So get set with the right drill. All right. Get, I'm gonna get set with the center of the blade. Got it set. Check twice. I always again start with the, the toe, because we do so much with the toe. I always start with the toe. That one worked, okay. That one, that one, that marker wasn't working. I gotta get new markers. All right. Pre-drill. For synthetics, I always like to pre-drill all the way. All right. And as I put in this first screw, I'm going to put it in, but I'm going to leave it with a little rattle room just to give me the flexibility. I mean, I want to be able to adjust the blade, wiggle it, see how there's enough play just to check. And then that way, if I needed to get under and adjust, if anything's not looking just right, I could adjust it even more. So... Gonna check its straightness on everything, looking good. All right, so now I'm gonna do the heel. Now I like, again, do the heel down the middle of the Achilles tendon, so I'm looking to see down that back strap, like that. So. Da, da, da. Checking twice and rolling it. Sometimes boots get twist. These are boots that have been worn for a while, so sometimes when boots have been worn for a while, you might think you're in the right spot, but the way they're wearing in, a little adjustment in would be a great thing. Oftentimes people tend to pronate in and then end up with these really awesome shapes coming in. metal or something when you're there. Turn it a little bit over. That's why I like pre-drilling, making sure that my screw is not going to hit something and torque me sideways and then all of a sudden I end up with a bent blade. Right. Uh, if you guys haven't noticed, I always have two drills. That way I can go from one motion to the other pretty quickly. Um, it is a luxury, but if you're doing a lot of skates, highly recommend doing that. Again, I'm going to screw this in, put some clay in it, I just want to see how it fits, do my little thumb check, see if it's aligning. Sometimes they'll stand up, sometimes they won't, could be anything from the sharpening, could be something internal, I still got to take some stuff off, but for the most part it's not like wham, wham. so I can tell that it's you know generally mounted in the same spot. Alright. Tighten it down just a little bit. And always check, 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 making sure it's straight. Oh, a little bit on there. Looking good. Another thing is, you know, drill bits come in many different types and styles. Getting ones that have that little bit of extension, those are really helpful to get them in line. I am going to do a tent mount on this as well to make sure I have 
most of the screws in, but not necessarily all of them. But after that locking screw that kind of keeps the alignment, because the number one thing I find with skaters and even coaches is they get their initial skate screws in and then you never see them. And then they come back and they're like, hey, my skates are clicking and snapping. And you're like, yeah, your, your skates are uh, actually loose. And they're like, how could that happen? And it's like, well, you didn't come back and see me after about five or six hours of skating. And uh, so there you go. So always make sure that you're checking back in with your skate tech, making sure you're getting your final set of screws in. Again, checking alignment, seeing if it's twisted at all. Because sometimes if it touches the side, as, it, as the screw's going into the hole, it can touch the surface and it will actually pull just enough. And so you can see I'm always checking to make sure it's straight. All right, cool. Now this is the part I was talking about. We're almost done. Um, we've got two things left. Number one, and remember I, I flipped it by accident, is making sure that you you can plane off all that stuff and you can plane it, don't hit the blade, but you can plane up this way to give it that nice um, reduced size. And then number two, any gaps that are underneath, because hockey molds are all different, you can see the gap there, nice sizable one. I'm gonna make five minute epoxy, fill that in and then let it run around and it'll actually fill up in these cracks. And one other thing I do is I'll use like a painter's tape on the exterior with when I'm gluing. So as you if you put the tape around the outside, that prevents the epoxy that you're putting in there from spilling out the side and getting those big run marks. Uh, I'm always really bad about <laughs> putting on um, chair rails. There's one in our bathroom where I, oh, I put in so much glue and then all the glue just came running out, so. Um, all right, well, this is Tech Tuesday on Wednesday. Thank you for your forgiveness and uh, I do appreciate you guys hanging out and if you ever have questions or you wanna do something similar, uh, it's marktechrep at gmail.com. See ya.